Have you ever wondered how you could use Ken Palm stats to get an edge in sports betting? What's up, everybody? This is Kerry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the four basic Ken Palm stats to predict the spread and the total, also called the over and under in sports bets. Now, these are very simple formulas I'm going to put into a spreadsheet and show you how my spreadsheet works. But at the very end of the video, I'm going to show you the point spread and the total based on Ken Palm stats for each of the four games tonight, Thursday, March 28th. First thing we're going to do is look at the actual Ken Palm stats. Look at the middle there. We have the adjusted efficiency margin, the adjusted offense, the adjusted defense, and the adjusted tempo. Those are the four stats that we'll use to make the prediction. Now, here's a snapshot of the actual model. We'll look at the teams on the far left. We have Connecticut and San Diego State. In the middle here, we have the, the adjusted efficiency margin, the adjusted offense, adjusted defense, adjusted tempo. Right here, we have what's called the expected tempo. Now, here's what we're after on the far right. The spread for this game, negative 8.2 for Connecticut is a favored. The total for the game, 137.6. The actual score for the two teams. And then down here at the bottom, the win probability for both teams. So let's check out the spreadsheet and see how this all works. Here's the spreadsheet that I created to do the Ken Palm betting model. But what I'm going to do is turn on the grid lines here so we can see the actual formulas here. And this is what we have. So we have the teams here on the left-hand side. We're going to enter these manually. You type in the actual team names here. Now, you might need to type in these values yourself based on the Ken Palm stats, which you can find on the website. Now, the first thing here is the expected tempo. Let's get to this. I'm going to zoom in here. What this is, is it's taken the product of the two adjusted tempos for these two teams. And then it's dividing by the average tempo for the entire league. That number, 66.67, really should be an input into this model, not just something I type into this formula. So the average tempo for the entire league is 66.7. If we take the product here and divide by that number, then we get the expected tempos. What this means here is this is the number of possessions per team for these two teams. We have right now North Carolina and Alabama. This is how we get the spread. It's very similar to what I showed you in my previous video using the Ken Palm prediction formula. And this is simply taking the difference of the adjusted efficiency margins for the team. So this, 20, this is here is H4 minus H5. And because that's per 100 possessions, I'm going to divide by 100. So what this will be, this will be the point differential per possession for this team. And what I do then is multiply that by the number of possessions for that team. Now, because this number should be negative, when we talk about the spread, I put a little negative in front of that. So here's the entire formula for the spread. There it is, it's highlighted. Now, of course, in the cell below that, we have the same formula, but we have H5 minus H4. So the value on the bottom here minus the value on the top. That's how you get the spread. Let's look at the total here. We're taking the number of points that each this team is expected to score. We have uh, North Carolina on top here per 100 possessions and the number of points that are expected to give up on defense. We're taking those and adding those two together, and then we're adding the same values for the, their opponent. This would be for Alabama. And so that's the number of points that Alabama will score and then give up per 100 possessions. And then we add those all together, and we simply divide by two because we have both teams here, so we're going to average those two numbers. But because that's per 100 possessions, we then divide by 100. So essentially what we do overall is divide by 200 here. And again, that's going to be the total point scored per possession and we multiply that by the number of possessions again in p4 and we get our total for the game so that's the formula for the total very easy formula to compute here based on these kinpom stats and then finally under the score here it's really simple to do this as well once you have the spread and the total and because the spread is negative for the favorite team you take the total score here which is new four subtract the spread value and basically what we're doing is we're taking half that total and then half the spread and that's the points that's going to be scored by the, by the favorite team. Down here, it just simply took the total minus the points scored for the pre other team. So this is 86 to 84, North Carolina over Alabama. And down here, we have exactly the same formulas as we had before here. But I did put in the negative here, again, because I am using the negative here for the spread. And that's how we get the win probability for each of these teams. That's it for the spreadsheet. I like to make this look a little bit more like a dashboard by removing all the lines here. So we have this for North Carolina, Alabama. Again, it's going to be an exciting game. Here are the predictions based on our spreadsheet model of the Ken Palm stats. Over here on the right-hand side are the actual predictions on the Ken Palm website for the four games being played tonight. You can see here that our model matches what's going on over here. So this is where it gets fun. The next game down here is Illinois and Iowa State. We look at what it pops out here. We have 151 for the total. 
76 to 75, Iowa State. That's exactly what Ken Palm website has. Let's look at the next game. We have Clemson against uh, Arizona. And according to the model here, that's going to be 80 to 74, which is exactly what the Ken Palm website has. And now here with the win probability is 71%. So slightly off on that. Like I said, these are not even more than 1% different. I'm not worried about that at all. I know I'm using the right formulas. All the rest of these are matching up. The last game here is the Connecticut versus San Diego State. And we see here that Kim Palm's predicting the score of 73 to 65. That matches what's on the website. So there you go. Ken Palm betting model in a nice little spreadsheet. You can put this in Excel spreadsheet or on Google Sheets or whatever and basically generate these win probabilities, the spreads and the totals and the team scores on your own just using the Ken Palm stats, which you can get from the website. Let's talk about how we might use these numbers with the Ken Palm data says and look at this compared to the various sports books and what they're offering for their lines, the spreads and the totals and see how we might find some value and play some actual bets. Okay, so back here to our slides here. This is the first one I showed you, Connecticut versus San Diego State. And as I mentioned here, we have a negative 8.2 spread here, 137.6, 73 to 65. So if we look at the actual lines, these are the lines based on the sports books here. And this is something I get from the lines.com. I just got that this morning on March 28th again. Here is that particular game. We have San Diego State and Connecticut. Connecticut is actually 11 and a half point favorite. So that's Pretty far off from the Ken Palm prediction here. Uh, what does that mean? A couple of things here. If we really believe in the Ken Palm stats and the Ken Palm model, we might see, well, let's give San Diego State some points here. Plus 11.5 is much better than the model says. So if we think the model is good, we want to get as many points as we can for San Diego State here to cover the spread. Now, maybe you don't think that's going to happen. Maybe you think Connecticut's going to blow this game out. In that case, if you don't like that, if you don't like the models numbers, if you don't like the lines here, then the best thing to do in sports betting is just to stay away. Stay away from that game or don't make that bet. There's plenty of other bets to consider here. Now, I do like the Illinois versus Iowa State game. This is, like I said, one of the most exciting games coming up today in, in the Sweet 16. And because I think Illinois is going to win this game, what I'll do is just bet the money line. Because if it's 1.5, paying the minus 110 juice is not any better than just being the money line here, which is going to be positive. I don't have the actual money line on my video here, but my bet for tonight will be to take Illinois on the money line. We also have the totals here. And as I mentioned before, this one right here between Alabama and North Carolina is very high. Ken Palm thinks it's going to be about 170. That's not too much different. But one more time, if you think that Ken Palm is better, if that's a good number there, and you think these numbers are too high, these numbers could have been bet up. That's one thing the sports books have to do. They have to balance the bets on both sides of the line to make sure they make a profit. So in that case, if a lot of people are going to bet this over and that gets really hyped up, maybe wait right before game time, then you might get a number that's even higher than 173.5, and that might be a good time then to bet under. So finally, I just want to leave you with my betting strategy in general, four basic steps here. The first thing I always do is I look at the models just to get a good feel for how these teams compare on paper. Now, we know that this is not going to be reality in most cases. In fact, that's not even, you know, we don't want to rely completely on the stats or the models. However, it's a good place to start. It eliminates human bias. Then I'm going to go shop the lines like at thelines.com and see if I can't get some value there. Maybe look for one that might be off from the rest of them. Maybe look for one that's the furthest away from the Ken Palm prediction and figure out, you know, if I have multiple sports books accounts, which of those I'm going to choose to place the bet that has the most value. The third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at injury reports. Think about this for a second. Suppose that the top player for a team has been doing great all season and maybe they got injured at the end of the last game. This model does not take into account injuries. So it's very important, very crucial, in fact, to look at injury reports. And then finally, use your well-informed gut. <laughs> this is how I look at this when I look at Illinois, for example. You know, I really like Illinois. They look good on paper. They look good to the eyeballs. Because they're only 1.2 underdog, according to Kim Palm, I actually feel like they have a really good chance of winning that game. So I'm going to go to the money line place a bet on Illinois. I hope you liked this video. Hope you got some value from it. If you did, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to make more videos like this until the end of the tournament. And I really look forward to looking at the Ken Palm stats. And my next video is going to be after Sweet 16 and when the Ken Palm stats are updated and then right before the Elite Eight. So that'll be Saturday morning sometime. Looking forward to that video. See you then.